After going through this module, you will be able to know about facial reconstruction and facial restructure. You will be knowing about chronological development of forensic facial reconstruction. Faces are always interesting and historical faces are more intriguing. Solving problems become easier through reconstruction but also arise interest and answers to various questions. Skull proved to be very useful for identification as they can sustain for several centuries. Recognition of the deceased was done using facial reconstruction in past and still practice in present days for teaching anatomy. In forensics, facial reconstruction of skull is done for the purpose of identification. The facial structure, the facial appearance is mainly determined by the bone of the skull. These bones form the base to which the tissues are attached. The bones, tissues, muscles and skin together determine the appearance of a person. The basic look of all the human is identical. Small differences should be considered for identification purposes. Variability of facial proportion helps to ensure the individuality of human face. Now, I will be talking about the chronological development. The first appearance in the history of facial reconstruction was in the Neolithic age. In earlier times, some cultures believed that bones or mummies are objects of honor and should be preserved whereas according to some other cultures, it was a phobia to preserve bones. Therefore, different beliefs and practices are followed towards the dead. Some preserve the body as in ancient Egypt whereas some cremate the body into ashes and small pieces of bone. From Neolithic age, skull has been used for remembering dead people. People of Jericho in Zordon Valley, they used to bury their deads once under the floors of their houses. They followed a custom in which they bury the skull separate from the body and without mandible. The absence of the mandible is most easily explained by the fact that it falls away from the cranium as the soft tissue decomposes. Many examples show how special respect was given to the severed head or skull in earlier times. In around 8500 to 8000 BC, skull plasting was followed by pre pottery Neolithic A culture in Zarico and it enjoyed a relatively brief trend among the pre pottery Neolithic B culture. In 1953, during excavation, nine skulls were found which were covered with plaster and shells were set in the eye socket for eyes in pre pottery Neolithic B levels. In 1958, at the other end of this site, another skull was found and identical materials were found in other sites of the same area. Out of all, only one skull has mandible attached to the skull, whereas on the other, the chin was modeled over the upper teeth, making the head appears like thickest. True physical likeness was not seen in Zerico heads in spite of the fact that they have their own characteristics. This showed that physical exactitude was not, an, was not the purpose. Symbolic aspect was more important. They used to work directly on the skull to retain facial proportions. They were the first artist to practice facial reconstruction. In 1983, another Neolithic site was excavated in which skull were found with established crania. They were embellished with lattice work of asphalt strips. Glue was used as a waterproof and 
protective covering for various artifacts. To make crisscross design on skulls, glue was used. It is possible that the glue was used on object for outdoor ceremonies similar to nomadic middle eastern group of the present day. From New Hebridean Island in 1700 Anno Domini, a face modeled upon skull was excavated. Next, I will be talking about the death marks. Many cultures use death marks of various types. Realistic and individual results were obtained. However, they were modeled upon the superficial characteristic of face and thus they had more in common with the sculpture created from the outside inwards rather than built outwards from the bone. Whereas in the Middle Ages, in criminal and missing person cases, identification of people is always an issue. Dead bodies were laid out for identification in public for identification in Middle Ages. To avoid decomposition only, head was displayed. Various techniques for identification through facial reconstruction were used later. During the Italian Renaissance, death marks were the most appreciated marks. Doctors and surgeons were provided with wax models made by Northern Italy artists. Dissection of human body was practiced to study about human anatomy in 15th century. How to body moved was of great interest. Thus, construction of human body started in the same period. Was model were used for documentation or for preliminary studies by Andrea del Verrocchio and Michelangelo. Transformation in anatomy teaching was carried out by Andra Vesalius by using wax models in medical schools and cadavers were submitted by life-size waxes. In the 18th century, wax modeling of anatomy was invented in the 17th century in Italy. Erodle Lely, he developed an art of constructing whole body from skeleton. He modeled muscles on the full skeleton and created anatomical masterpieces which were used for medical teaching. He and his colleagues, he, they developed scientific art and described that skeleton is the ideal frame to build musculature and body. The credit for the theory of facial reconstruction can be given to these artists that are the shape and dimension of the skull can help to estimate the attachment and shape of the muscle. The parameter of the face and importance of anatomical correctness instead of exact likeness. By 19th century, the role of crime detection increased. Practical and crude methods were used to discriminate criminals in earlier times. Some ba basic methods were used for confession and identification of criminals. The suspect were tortured till they confessed their crime or they used to throw them into water and believed that if they drowned, then they must have been guilty. The suspect were dragged towards the presumed victim and if the corpse would blend, they were proven guilty. Identification of unknown corpse was a problematic task. In March 1875, an, a night watchman found a severed head in the mud of the bank of River Thames. For identification, cleaned head was stacked in St. Margaret churchyard in Westminster in a belief that someone would recognize it. It was kept in a jar containing spirit to prevent further decomposition. Facial reconstruction attracted interest of anatomist as an academic exercise. Comparison of portrait and sculptures, authentication of remains of famous people was a common practice. The anatomist Welker in 1884 compared 
what was thought to be Raphael's skull with a self portrait and compared the supposed skull of Kant with his death mask and he found that the respective correlations were too good for chance two dimensional reconstruction techniques was used by him they made an accurate orthogonal perspectives sketches as an outline of the skull and death mask then he tried to superimpose the outlines he also carried out a research on facial tissue depth to accompany facial reconstruction in 1883 the first scientific attempt in this field was made by german anatomist his in 1895 they wanted to identify the remains of john sebastian back he prepared a data by taking measurement of facial tissues from small number of corpses and then he used this data to model a bust onto a plaster cast of the skull of back comparison were made between the final reconstruction and contemporary portraits and busts of back sculpture were employed by his and colman to produce further three dimensional reconstruction Sefner and Buckley worker with his and Coleman respectively in 1898 Coleman authenticated the skull as of Dante by reconstructing the face of Dante from his supposed skull the reconstructed skull was identical to Dante's face facial reconstruction of stone age women from France was also done by Coleman this reconstruction was considered to be one of the real scientific reconstruction technical drawing were made by measuring flesh thickness from hundreds of women from that area and then they were brought to life by buckley reconstruction of early hominids such as pithecanthropus and neanderthals were also produced by various anatomist and anthropologist in 1908 a well preserved skull of neanderthal was found which was reconstructed by anthropologist from poland russia and america different results were obtained head of the old neanderthal male was reconstructed in 1980 by solger who was an anatomist different reconstruction of the same skull was produced by anthropologist martin and von egeling at the anatomy department of zena university in 1913 influence of soft tissue on features of face made from the skull was experimented by hegling and he believed that identification of races can be done through reconstruction he made a cast on the head of a male cadaver to test his theory and to obtain an objective likeness thickness and deposition of soft tissue was measured when we talk about the 20th century there were many technical developments determination of sex and race of the skull and estimated age of an individual at death was determined by anatomist for many years facial reconstruction was considered seriously by medical legal expert in 20th century in 1916 bones of brooklyn seller were discovered and measurements were taken it was indicated that the measurements were of italian rolled out newspapers were used for neck eye sockets they were fitted with brown eyes and facial bones were molded with colored plasticine after display of head several local italian they recognized the dead man as domenico la rosa who disappeared some time before apparently apart from la rosa's fuller face the image was precise this case was a turning point in forensic science in the russian school there were many pitfalls in reconstruction technique About 20 century after La Rosa case Mikhail Gerasimov was interested in archaeology and paleontology his interest in 
human skull morphology was encouraged by professor ad grigrev of university of irkutsk siberia gerasimov work was complicated first he created a system to quantify those parts of the skull where overlying tissue is thinnest and would be most invariant and reproducible secondly he developed a what for determination of muscular structure of individual head he created russian method anatomical aspects were considered mainly in this method in this development of skull and neck musculature it was considered fundamental with the sum of the leftover tissues or muscles on the skull musculature can be determined and rebuilt faithfully even through the shape and size of musculature of each individual that is different the american method is totally different from the russian method as it depends on careful measurement of thickness of tissues present on the bones the first facial reconstruction in united states was carried out by mcgregor of columbia university he modeled faces of prehistoric man on skull cast which were kept in natural history museum new york in 1950 the european method of facial reconstruction was brought to attention in 1912 by wilder he reconstructed the faces of native american skulls many valuable tips and guidelines regarding facial reconstruction were provided by wilder and mcgregor in 1946 facial reconstruction was considered with seriousness after examination by anthropologist wilton krogman krogman's collaboration with forensic artist betty pet gatliff and physical anthropologist clad snow led to the growth of american 3d method later with further experience it was concluded by gatliff and snow that 3d reconstruction of face could be useful for forensic identification table prepared from average facial tissue thickness data according to age gender and ethnic group were used in american method a computer assisted method of reconstruction using tissue depth markers was introduced by anthropologist douglas ubelaker in 1992 various facial reconstruction artists are working in us and have a vast record of identification from faces recognized when we talk about the uk manchester method in this method superimposition techniques were used for facial identification helmer in germany followed american method but r nawe he combined russian and american techniques to develop a new technique which was widely used nawe's method uses the detailed traces of muscle insertion on the skull to ascertain facial detail and form and relies on tissue thickness data as in american method to model soft tissue depth facial reconstruction is done to produce similarity in face which helps in recognition of a deceased person in the last 10 years development of various computer software used for facial reconstruction has took place flexibility efficiency and speed of reconstruction has increased due to these methods hand reconstruction it depends on the skills and experience of the individual but in case of computer aided modeling skills and experience is not required the three steps are basically involved in most suitable system these steps include scanning to gather the information from the skull input details like age ethnic group stature etc computation to produce a gallery of the most portable facial outcomes 
Moss and his colleagues they developed a computer technique for forensic purposes at London. It was based on a system used for cranial reconstructive surgery. This system was developed for 3D surface data acquired of the human face. Human error in it is minimum as manual intervention is minimal. Computer or computed tomography scanning is interfaced with laser video camera acquired with skull. Operator's subjective skill of placing the landmark is also involved in this system. To make comparison between manual and computer assisted technique, single blind test of known skull was carried out. Photographs of the individual whose skull was used was compared with the reconstruction. It was concluded that both the techniques are useful for identification purpose but manual method produced more recognizable and realistic face in contrast to the computer technique. Modification of manually created reconstruction was difficult and it was a time consuming technique. Limitation with computer assisted technique was over reliance on small number of facial tissue depth data and limited library of facial features. This system produces images of uniform style and quality whereas variability of these features is high in hand drawn sketches. Volume deformation named computer facial reconstruction system was developed in 1998 by Nelson and Michel. This system started with MRI and its greatest limitation was that it used a face that the end result would ultimately resemble and therefore was only as close to the real face as the sample face. Different methods have been used for facial reconstruction in skulls of famous subject or archaeological remains. New fast flexible and objective 3D reconstruction computer program are in full development. Faster computer aided reconstruction and new methodologies have been proposed. So students now let us summarize. Skull proves to be very useful for identification as they can sustain for several centuries. The bones, tissues, muscles and skin together determine the appearance of a person. From Neolithic age, skull has been used for remembering dead people. In around 8500 to 8000 before Christ, skull plastering was followed by pre pottery Neolithic A culture in Zerico and it enjoyed a relatively brief trend among the pre pottery Neolithic B culture. In 1953, during excavation, nine skulls were found which were covered with plaster and shells. They were set in eye sockets for eyes in pre pottery Neolithic B levels. In 1983, another Neolithic site were excavated in which skull were found with embellished crania. They were embellished with lattice work of asphalt stripped. Dead bodies were laid out for identification in public for identification in Middle Ages. Wax modeling of anatomy was invented in 17th century in Italy. By 19th century, the role of crime detection increased. Practical and crude method were used to discriminate criminals in earlier times. The anatomist Welker in 1884, he compared what was thought to be Raphael's skull with a self-portrait and he compared the supposed skull of Kant with his death mask and found that the respective correlations were too good for chance. Facial reconstruction was considered seriously by medical legal expert in 20th century. In 1916, bones of Brooklyn cellar were discovered and measurements were taken. It was indicated that the measurements were of Italian. Rolled out newspaper were used for neck, eye sockets that were fitted with brown eyes and facial bones were moduled with colored plasticine. Reconstruction of faces according to the Gerasimo method 
took place in two steps, basic reconstruction and final modeling. He stated that final modeling needed extensive experience and training. American method is totally different from Russian method as it depends on the careful measurement of thickness of tissue present on the bones. Superimposition techniques were used for facial identification in Britain. Three steps are involved in most suitable system. Scanning to gather the information from the skull, input details like age, ethnic group, stature, etc. and computation to produce a gallery of the most probable facial outcomes.